In Tech Watch Now, congressional investigators say several of the country's top government agencies are not meeting federal cybersecurity standards. A new report from a Senate committee looks at two years of Inspector General findings from eight agencies to get a clear picture of how the department's networks are protected. Overall, the agencies were given an average C- grade. So Nicole Skanga is following this for us. Uh, we're going to check in with her now for a little more analysis to find exactly what this means. I mean, we know about these threats, of, you know, and I know that the threats get more sophisticated as the years go on, but I expect our agencies to be the most protected, government agencies. The report found that some agencies were failing to protect Americans' personal data, like names, dates of birth, social security numbers. You know what you can do with all that information? What are some of the ways these agencies are putting our information at risk? Yeah, Anne-Marie, a C-minus is not a grade I would have wanted to take home to my parents, and it's <laughs> certainly not a good sign here. Also, these are not just any federal agencies. These are eight agencies that are tasked with protecting the American people. Agencies like the Department of Homeland Security, the Social Security Administration, the State Department, and they failed to implement some key cybersecurity measures, cyber hygiene that you and I talk about all the time, encryption of sensitive data, multi-factor authentication, privileged access only for those that need it. Listen to this. The State Department, for instance, instance, left thousands of accounts active after employees left the agency for extended periods of time on both its classified and unclassified servers. The top watchdog at the Department of Education was able to retrieve hundreds of sensitive, personally identifiable information files, including 200 credit card numbers, and investigators even found an unauthorized shadow IT system on the Department Department of Housing and Urban Development's network that existed without the authority to operate at the Department of Transportation, the Inspector General, could find no record of nearly 15,000 IT assets, just no record of more than 7,000 cell phones owned by the agency, nearly 5,000 servers, and 3,000 workstations, Anne-Marie. Wow. Um, and we've certainly seen several high profile cyber attacks by foreign actors recently. Um, uh, the federal government has kind of pointed the finger directly at China most recently. But of course, we've heard about Russian based um, cyber criminals, not necessarily sanctioned by the Russian government, but at least from that area of the world. How vulnerable are these agencies to those types of attacks? Yeah, in short, Anne-Marie, really vulnerable. And some of the recent cyber attacks that we've seen, we already know that they infiltrated government agencies. So in April, you alluded to this, but Chinese state-sponsored hackers breached five federal agencies through vulnerabilities in a popular product from a Utah-based software company, Pulse Connect Secure. We know that Russian criminals compromised nine federal agencies through a supply chain hack last year. Solar Winds, we've been hearing Hearing a lot about that even recently, including the Department of Homeland Security and the Department of Justice that were compromised. And so lawmakers overseeing this report today, like Senator Portman and Senator Peters, say it's unacceptable that our federal agencies are not doing everything they can to safeguard America's data, especially in light of recent events. And in short, we really have to start taking this seriously. Mm -hmm. um, the report also looked at the Department of Homeland Security, a program there that's actually supposed to help federal agencies stay secured. What did investigators find out about that program? Yeah, the report also found that Einstein, which is DHS's flagship cybersecurity program that is meant to protect all of the federal government's civilian agencies, suffers from, quote, significant limitations in detecting and preventing intrusions. Now, this is something we've heard before. The Department of Homeland Security, though, spent billions on this program to detect cyber attacks on government agencies, and the Russians outsmarted it during solar 
solar winds. That's in part because the current approach to Einstein was designed to address cyber risks of a decade ago on the perimeter of the networks. And congressional investigators are recommending an update to Einstein that really justifies its massive price tag. Authorization of the program is set to expire in 2022. And the challenge here will be to move quickly so there are no big gaps in time to authorize a program that's flexible, that meets the cybersecurity standard today. This is a problem we see a lot today, Anne-Marie. The lawmaking process, the policymaking process, the uh, you know funding of some of these programs does not move as quickly as the technology itself. And so we end up implementing mm -hmm. a cybersecurity program that was designed to protect us years ago and not today. Yeah, government simply is not practiced at being that nimble, and the cyber threats are working much faster to get ahead of whatever the government can put together. Nicole, thank you very much. Thank you.